Hi, Mulgrew. It's wonderful to have you here as our artist in residence for 2010. Um, I want to couch a lot of the questions that I ask you just because of the flame keepers idea that we've been um, touting as the theme this year. Um, you are probably the biggest flame keeper that we all know of. Um, the fact that you played with Blakey and, and with Betty Carter and with Woody Shaw, you have touched so many people and those people have touched you. So I am just really thrilled to have you here as our big flame keeper artist in residence. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, to Terry. It's really an honor to have been chosen um, to fill this position. Uh, and I like that term, uh, flame keeper, because that's kind of in keeping, if you will, with uh, being a jazz messenger. It is indeed. <laughs> and uh, um, that term has um, become more dear to me as the years have gone by, you know. Uh, playing this music, we really are messengers. Indeed. And um, if that's a flame that we keep, then I'm, I'm fine with that, you know. Uh, but I think it's uh, the message and the story in this music is very, very important to the culture. And uh, I'm proud to have been a jazz messenger and to kind of wear that banner somewhere. I think it's real interesting how musicians are discovered by mm -hmm. other musicians. I mean, that's really who discovers all of you. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that that is a certain light and a certain flame that that a veteran player recognizes in a young person. Um, and I, that must have been what happened. How did it happen with you and Betty Carter, for instance? Well, um, to tell you the truth, I knew little about Betty Carter. Um, I had been uh, on the road with the Duke Ellington Orchestra for about three years and um, was kind of getting ready to, I, well at least I felt I was ready to kind of leap off the big band thing and, and, and to get more on to the scene in New York and play with a small group. And, and so that opportunity came when Betty Carter called me one day. and. Uh, <laughs> Out of the blue? Mm, yeah. Just out of, well, <laughs> as far as I was concerned, it was out of the blue. She had been told about, uh, about me by uh, people like Cedar Walton and my uh, friend James Williams, who's now deceased, and a few other people, because I used to hang around in New York when, uh, when the band had a few days off. I'd hang around and get to know people. And um, I guess Cedar told her, well, there's this kid that's been hanging around. He plays okay. <laughs> and um, John Hicks had been our pianist, her pianist, and uh, when he left the band, uh, she called me. I don't even remember how she got my number. But anyway, I was in California. Oh, wow. So she called you from New York and you were to, in California. Yeah, I was in California <laughs> at a hotel there with the Ellington Band. We were getting ready to go to Japan for two weeks. And um, she said, I'd, I'd like to hear you. And I said, well, I'm on my way to Japan, and uh, I'll be gone for two weeks. And she said, when you come back, uh, come by the house and kind of audition and do a rehearsal. So I did that when I came back and uh, went to her house. And uh, I rehearsed with the, her then trio, which was Curtis Landy on bass. <laughs> and uh, Kenny Washington on drums. <laughs> and I hadn't met either of those guys before then. And uh, Betty's book was notoriously raggedy. <laughs> <laughs> Vague. You know, well, yeah, all the tattered, all the pages were tattered. And so I was trying to read this music and there were uh, ledger lines that uh, went off the page, you know, <laughs> the music just went off the page and you had to kind of decipher what was supposed to be there and that kind of thing. But anyway, I guess I passed the test. I guess you did. And uh, she hired me and that uh, was the beginning of my uh, stay in New York. Was she kind of the first singer that you had been, that you had worked with or, well, you worked with some singers in the Mercer Ellington. Yeah, there was Anita Moore with the Ellington band. But, That's great. Uh, Outside of that, uh, Betty was the first real singer that I'd worked with for a time. So, 
After you did a few years with Betty, how no, did it... No, it was, ended up being eight months. Oh, it was really short. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I tell you, I, I, um, what I really wanted to do, when I came to New York, uh, I, like I said, I knew a little about Betty. I knew there was a famous singer that they called Bebop Betty Carter. <laughs> and um, I confess to not having heard her music very much. I learned to appreciate her after I got the gig, you know. <laughs> but I wanted to play with Woody Shaw more than anything. Yeah, to me, that was my reason for coming to New York, was to get the gig with Woody Shaw. And uh, when he called me, uh, it was about eight months after I was with Betty, and that's when I left the Betty Carter Trio. Well, who was playing with Woody Shaw at that point? When you joined that band, Victor Lewis on drums, um, Stafford James on bass, and Steve Teray on trombone. A lot of these and guys of are going to be. A lot of these guys are going to be at the festival. We have so many of. Great, great. I mean, mm -hmm. it, there's going to be a lot of reunions. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really fun. So, so I do want you to talk about your your um, stint with with Blakey, your years with Blakey, and what that was like. Um, a little bit, and then I want you to talk a little bit about Woody Shaw, because mm -hmm. I think that uh, you told a story earlier today that I think is really fun. About joining Woody Shaw, yes. Well, uh, which way shall I go first? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Blakey, which actually came after Woody Shaw. Oh! Mm -hmm. See, I don't have your sing yeah. sequence. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> Art Blakey ha had seen me on the circuit when I was playing with Betty Carter, and um, also when I was with Woody Shaw, you know, sometimes we'd be traveling the same uh, circuit in Europe or we'd be on the same concert sometimes, you know. Um, so he kind of took note of me and on a couple of different occasions, you know, he made it known that he had his eye on me. And um, while I was with Betty Carter, um, we were doing a sound check at uh, UC Berkeley, and um, I was just noodling around at the piano between whatever else was going on, and um, I heard this e this voice in my ear saying, you should let me put some fire under you. <laughs> and um, I turned around, and it was Art Blakey in my, whispering in my ear. So, um, that let me know that he, he had taken note of me and he was aware of what I was doing. And um, and a couple of other times I, I ran into him um, on the road, on the jazz circuit, and um, he would say things to me and uh, I said, okay. So when Detroit pianist Johnny O'Neill, who had been in the band, left the band, uh, Terrence Blanchard and Donald Harrison, who were front line in, in the band, recommended me to Art. So um, by this time I had joined uh, Johnny Griffin's band. It was kind of new in the band, but um, for some reason Johnny had a hard time getting bookings at that time. And um, um, I had just got married and was kind of waiting for the phone to ring, so to speak, a little bit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And um, Art called me to his apartment for a meeting. And what was funny is he never asked me to join the band. He told me where the first gig was. Wow. And I said, <laughs> he said, I want you to join the band and we start such and such a place at McHale's on 97th Street. Uh, on such and such a date, and we started such and such a time, and I want you to be there. And, blah, blah. and I was trying to say, uh, I wanted to say, Art, right, I'd love to join the band, but I'm pl kind of playing with Jenny Griffin now, and I, I need time to kind of work this out with him. And he said, Oh, never mind, Johnny, he's in the family. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I. <laughs> You're right. Really? But I was so happy because Art had plenty of work, and we went right on the road, and, you know, the work was consistent, and the work has been consistent ever, ever since.